few weeks ago we started the Hard As Bales feature and we saw Andy Lynch doing it with Wagga Wayne Godwin uh, last week, a few weeks ago and now we've got an extra special version of Hard As Bales with two guys who bottled it out in the 1977 Challenge Cup final and have been best mates or really good friends ever since as you do in the world of rugby league and I want to sit with these two guys and find out who the toughest guys were in rugby league during the 70s. Now this is a period when you weren't allowed off the pitch until you'd had a scrap. This is when you had to really be hard. This is when the biff really did mean something because it's a massive part of the game. And uh, we've got on the back of what looks like a scrappy bit of piece of paper, uh, five, the top five of Big Jim Mills here, witness legend, and uh, Roy Dickinson, Leeds legend, and uh, Stanley Lee and Bramley and all the rest of it you've seen Roy before. Now, we're gonna start with you, Jim, at number five. We've got the man sat next to me here, Roy Dickinson. Tell me about Roy when he was a, a young lad. Yeah, well, I, you know, I remember playing at Leeds and uh, Roy coming. He was a young lad just coming into the game. And uh, he was a real handful that day, you know, and I thought to myself, it's time to retire from this game. These young, <laughs> these young bucks coming through. But uh, I've always admired Roy. He's, you know, I've watched him over the years and played the game. Well, I played at that game at Wembley and, uh, you know, he, he, he was a tough, hard forward, and but uh, a quality forward as well. When you uh, found or came across a new young lad like that, was it important to put them on a short leash, just let them know which environment they were coming in straight away? Yeah, well, you you, you got to let them know who was the boss on that day, but uh, <laughs> that's what I say. Uh, you could see he was uh, going to develop into a big, strong man, and uh, I thought, uh, I'll give it a few more years and I'll retire. Good man. And on your number five, somebody who I've come across, been coached by him a lot of years ago, and he's very tough. A Castleford icon, Mal Reilly. Tell me a bit about Mal Roy. Well, Malcolm Reilly, one of the, the best players I've ever seen in my life, actually. And I remember Malcolm as a youngster. Malcolm will be about nearly 10 years older than me. I hope you don't mind me saying this. <laughs> but uh, I, I watched him as a youngster and uh, I remember him going to Australia. And everybody in Australia was going to kill him. And uh, he, he reversed the, the tables, actually. And he, he knocked seven bells out of everybody else. And uh, he was a target at the time. And Malcolm, a fantastic player. Fantastic ambassador for rugby league, yeah, great coach as well, and uh, yeah, he's number five on my hit list of uh, tough men. Mate, I've heard that he still does a little bit now when he gets out, gets confrontational, and he will not back down to anybody. How old, no matter how old you are. Malcolm's always been a physical guy, and uh, he still thinks he's about 28 years old. <laughs> it's, uh, you have to I, let him win. I, I'm, yeah, of course, you've got to let him win. I'm not going to be one to tell him no. <laughs> <laughs> now, at number four, um, for you, Roy. We've got Graham Eccles. Tell me a bit about that. Yeah, Mike. Graham Eccles, uh, one of my Leeds teammates for, for Donkey's years here. At, played at Leeds about 12 years, did Graham, and uh, pound for pound, maybe the, the toughest, strongest, hardest man uh, I've ever played with or played against. And uh, the big fella uh, at the side of me will tell you that because he once said to me, we're at a do once, and he says, Who was that little so and so that played in the second row with you? I said, <laughs> He said, He was like a Jack Russell. I said, Oh, Graham Eccles. He said, That's him. He said, I used to look for him and, and run the other side of the play the ball. He said, He was a beast. <laughs> so that, that tells you how tough he was. He was brave. Was he a speed bump? Was he always chipping you up? Yeah, he, 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 he was uh, full of vigour, old Graham, and uh, you always knew when he was on the field, you know. He, because uh, you get these little hard ones that sometimes they're tougher than the big hard ones. So, uh, yeah. you know, he, he, was a, he was a real handful, Graham. Great, great player, nice lad. Now, number four for you, Jim, is uh, a guy called John O'Neill. John O'Neill, yeah, he was a great forward. Sadly, he died a few years back. Uh, he, he was playing for South Sydney when I was playing for North Sydney. And I played against him for uh, Great Britain against Australia. And he was a, a great uh, running forward, strong, uh, very uh, talented. And, uh, you, you know, he, you, you always had a tough game with him and uh, had a lot of respect for John and he was a lovely lad off the field. Yeah. And at number three for you was Tony Fisher. Bradford leaves Cass. Tell us uh, what Tony was like. <laughs> well, Tony, uh, teammate of Jim's in Wales. Uh, Tony's maybe one of the craziest men I've ever met in my life. Uh, I played with him, I played against him and I worked with him and uh, nothing was easy. Uh, if I can say this on TV, it's totally crackers, but uh, I hope he won't mind because he's a great friend of mine was Tony. And rumour has it that Tony was born in May 1945 and two weeks later the Germans surrendered. <laughs> so uh, I think that tells you something about how tough Tony was. What is it about you Welsh boys? I mean, I wouldn't like to play against you now, Jim, to be honest with you, it's your hands. But you, you Welsh boys have, have got it in you, haven't you, to uh, have a bit of a fight in you? Oh yeah, Tony, talking about Tony Fisher, I was the only one that room with him on tour, you know. Nobody else would go with him. 
and I had to fight him every night before I go to bed. <laughs> and uh, you think you'd got him beat and you'd tuck him back in bed and say, don't give it away, Tony. And he'd wake up in the middle of the night and give you another smack. <laughs> so uh, he was deadly, Tony, but a great, great hooker, very fiercely competitive. And uh, I don't think the Australians like playing against him. Or, well, and nobody liked playing against him. He was a bit, uh, as, as, as uh, Roy says, a bit crazy. Brilliant. Yeah. Number three for you, Jim, Frank Foster. Tell me about Frank Foster. Oh, Frank was a, I think all the lads have played rugby league in, in his era, but we'll say that Frank was a tough lad. Uh, he, he was uh, a wonderful uh, person for using the elbow. He was an expert. And uh, I, re I remember uh, one day we were playing, I think Doncaster, and the hooker come across and flew at Frank, and Frank just lifted it. was perfect time, and I've never seen time like it. And he lifted his elbow, and uh, next minute the hooker was spitting teeth out and lumps of blood. And I said, Frank, we're winning by 30 points. I said, what do you do that for? He said, it's like cracking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I think the elbow back in your day, Roy, is it a bit like as important as the ball? It was, it was just an extension of your body, wasn't it? Something you were going to use in the game. It was a weapon that was well used, actually. Not not for all the best things, but uh, just one of them things that happened. You know, everybody got put up with an elbow. I can't. I don't know any player that's ever been hit by an elbow, to be honest. You know, it's just that's how it went. You know, knee and elbow, a bony shoulder, especially in Cumbria. You know, they had three elbows. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the toughest places I've ever been. I remember going to Boulevard and places like all. They're always tough down there. And uh, in number two, second spot for you, we've got Big Mick Harrison. Uh, all and leads. Uh, so you know a lot about him. Just tell us what he used to get up to on pitch. Oh, Mick Harrison, one of my heroes, as uh, big Mick. I was lucky enough uh, to, to never play against him, to be honest. Um, but I played with him here and he looked after me as a youngster and he brought me through the game. I was going to take over his position, which I eventually did. And, you know, Mick, Mick helped me through everything and he, he understood that a young lad was going to come through and he, he showed me so many tricks and of the trade and everything else but he was the strongest man and Jim will maybe back me up he's the strongest man I've ever met in my life just naturally strong man and nobody could handle Mick Harrison nobody ever touched him and at your number two Cliff Watson well Cliff another very very strong man tremendously strong uh, I always remember uh, him playing in the first test when they won the Ashes in Australia 1970 and uh, the first test they re the Australians really got stuck into Great Britain and uh, they give Great Britain a good idea in that day, but uh, halfway through the game, I remember uh, uh, Morgan, the Australian prop, uh, decided to uh, give Cliff the uh, Liverpool kiss. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, what he didn't realise that was uh, that uh, he uh, he was a, a lot better than him giving the Liverpool <laughs> kiss. So uh, he he, uh, he he got one back and. Uh, his nose was round the back of his head, and uh, <laughs> and uh, Cliff Cliff uh, said uh, after the game, he said, if you're gonna you know do that, you know do it properly. And he said, uh, I've given him a lesson today and showed him how to do it. But he he was a very I played against him a few times. He was very strong, uh, you know. Uh, played for Great Britain. I don't know. It must be one of the records for a prop forward, and uh, a great player. He lives in Australia now, and uh, great player. Outstanding, I could sit and listen to this all day. And I want to jump to your, your number one, and that's Arthur Beatson. Arthur, I used to I love old Arthur. I always remember when I signed for North Sydney, he was playing for Balmain. And uh, the first game I was at the North Sydney Overlay, and he came up, had a good chat to him. I thought, well, what a nice lad. Uh, I should never have thought that because uh, we, we played a few weeks later and uh, I seen the other side of him, but he was a great forward. Uh, I had many skirmishes uh, with Arthur. Uh, you know, enjoyed it. We enjoyed a good scrap, but he was, he was a great footballer. Very difficult to bring down. He had this big backside. He turned his backside on you, and you just by the time you got your arms round him, the ball was gone. He was a great footballer. He played for LKR. I think he learned a lot of his football at LKR. He was uh, a, a, a great, great all-round footballer, and uh, well, he, he is a legend in Australia, yeah. and uh, rightly so. Uh, I'd say him and John O'Neill in Australia were the two best props I played against. And Arthur, if you say a, a prop forward had it all, yep. Arthur had it all. He was yeah. a great player, all round player. Yeah, great. Brilliant. And uh, the big drum roll, the number one for Roy Dickinson. Before we go in and celebrate the 1957 and 77 Challenge Cup finals upstairs with the Barrow, Leeds, and Widnes players, you want you to give us who your number one is? Because I don't think he's sat too far away, right? Is of course the big Jim Mills. <coughs> yes, uh, big Jim Mills. Uh, 
was my first hero, one of my first heroes watching the game uh, as a kid, like, you know, when we used to play in the playground, you know, I was always Big Jim Mills and uh, I, used to, I used to smash everybody around the head and uh, all this and I used to get away with it, you know, it's, uh, Jim didn't get away with it as much as I did in the playground, but uh, I always wanted to be Big Jim Mills and I was so lucky to play against him and uh, Jim used to knock me from pillar to force, to be honest, as a youngster. And uh, it might sound daft now, but it was a pleasure, you know, because there's not, not many people in my school have been thumped by Big Jim Mills. So I was happy, I mean, that's why I was a good prof. <laughs> Brilliant. You've heard it from the best, 1970s. These are the tough guys.